Hello, it's Alex here from LearnBeachVolleyballFast.com and this is part three in my handsetting mini-series. Uh, in this part we're gonna talk a little bit about mindset, mm, sort of a learning mindset, sort of like a, if you don't believe you can, well then you can kind of type of thing. And uh, <laughs> it's funny, I mean, so this is the third part. and. In a way, I wanted to have this part as the first part because it is very fundamental. If you have this wrong, you're simply not going to learn the handset. That's just sort of how it is. Um, at the same time, my YouTube channel so far has been very mindset and very little practical stuff. So I thought when I'm this handsetting series is the first one that's actually more practical, technical. So I thought I wouldn't start with with even more mindset. Um, but I want to sort of share my story about how I decided that I would really want to learn the handset, which was at first I just started playing volleyball and you know the people I played with they didn't care so we were doing handsets all the time, doubles, lifts, whatnot, whatever, ugly, and uh, nobody cared and I didn't really even know that there were rules. Um, then I had a, <laughs> I had a trip to California where very quickly people told me, hey, that's, that's not okay what you're doing. <laughs> you, you can't handset like that. And at first I was like, what do you, what do you mean? Because I didn't really even understand that there. I didn't really understand the rules. And um, so, which got me into this sort of mystery phase. Because even in California, Sometimes I still handsetted and sometimes they were like, yeah, that's fine. That was good. And sometimes they were like, that's not good. And I didn't really understand why. So for me, it became this mystery. Uh, and I thought that it's sort of like a lottery game. Like you just do a handset and sometimes it comes out clean and people are happy. And sometimes it comes out unclean and people are unhappy. Uh, and I, at that point, like I was maybe stupid enough to think that I don't even know if you can control it because I couldn't control it so yeah however later a little bit later I saw good players pro players and I just watched them play and I realized that they were hand setting and every time I mean almost every time it was clean it was good there was no problems and this was a crucial insight for me because I needed to realize that it is possible to master this. Even though for me it was a mystery, for me I didn't know the fine details of the technique yet that would make it clean every single time, doesn't mean that there are not details that make it clean every single time. So for me, it was really important to understand that this is a skill that anyone can learn once they just put their mind into it. It took away, it didn't yet take away the details of the mystery, but I understood that this is not a mystery. And I understood that if I just decide, absolutely decide that this is what I'm going to learn and I'm going to learn this thing, uh, then it's possible. There's also two more things that gave me even more motivation, uh, which were I could see this thing that I've mentioned in some other videos, but I could see how if I learned the handset, that would actually take my volleyball career, not only my, my playing, obviously my playing would get, get better, I would be a better setter, I could be more accurate, but also sort of like I would be hacking the system because I would get access to better players which then it's always good to be surrounded by better players um, that's something I knew from my snowboarding career before always ride it with the better guys because they're gonna push you more um, but learning how to handset is like a hack to get access to better players because then you can go and practice spiking with guys that are way better than you and stuff like that because they're happy because you can set them and you know they can 
<laughs> they can hit the ball from your sets. Uh, so that's cool. And once you become friends with people, then it's easier and easier and, and, and so on. So yeah, I guess it's this is just a basic rule like in life. If you don't believe you can do something, well, you're not going to be able to do it. If you don't actually decide that, hey, I know that I can learn the handset and I'm going to do it. If you don't decide that, there's no point even trying. Just give up and bump set. <laughs> it's, it's sort of that simple because you're not just gonna like happen to learn it you're gonna have to actually decide to put in some time to learn it and uh, hopefully the, the th these things I've shared in this video series will help you with that there's another thing that is very mindset as well about learning the handset and I have an explanation of um, so <laughs> I used to work as a carpenter and if you build a house uh, during the construction period the house is not built yet right because you're like you can have the foundation laid, laid which means that you're further than not even having started the house then you can build the walls you're still not finished with the house but you're even further than when you just had the foundation and so on and the funny thing is that if someone like a referee came and said this house is done uh, you know that would only happen in the end and the thing is that this referee in pitch volleyball is always there which, which this means that you have to recognize that to have a good handset to learn a good handset there's going to be many pieces that you have to put together you're gonna have to build the foundation, the walls, the roof, whatever, interior, and then you're done. And only when you're done, the referee will stop whistling. Because I think people get too, you know, let's say that you watched part one of this video series. Before you watch, watched part one of the video series, you tried to handset a tournament and you got whistled at and you lost the point. Then you watched part one and learn the handshake method which according to me is one step further thing is that if you now go to a tournament again you're gonna get whistled at again because you might have something else in your technique that you're not good enough at yet and here I think people get discouraged because then they don't recognize that they have made progress because they're still hearing the whistle but <laughs> you have to see that you have done progress and you're one step further and now we have one step less to the finish goal and there is an end goal uh, there's not there is not unlimited stuff you need to have put together at the same time to have a good handset <laughs> even though it might feel like a mystery and especially if you don't know what to change it's gonna be then it's going to feel like a mystery because you're simply unaware of what you could do different what you could do better and um, that's what I hope that this mini series and uh, maybe you do my course where I'm gonna go even more in depth I hope that that can help with that cool I think that's about that for this video um, in the next video I'm gonna go uh, give you some more practical tips uh, a little bit more technique a little bit more practical things around practicing this uh, this stuff uh, but yeah these two mindset things decide that you're going to learn it and <laughs> trust that you are doing progress even though the referee might whistle at you uh, like even a couple of things you know you might even change three things with your setting but it's still not perfect it's still not good enough for the referee to not whistle to you remember that you have done progress and it's going to you're going to get to that clean handset eventually all right as always uh, like the video subscribe to the channel and join the Facebook group and see you in the next video